your girl Mirna G and thank you so much for tuning back in. It has been one heck of an obstacle for us to get back to create together. From rainy weather in Nashville, technical difficulties, and a hiccup with one of our DIYs, but we saw it through. This week starts a two-part series of my office slash guest room makeover, and I'm so excited. When I tell you guys, this room quickly turned into a storage room. From thrifted items, DIY supplies, office supplies, the dog's cage, if it wasn't used in the rest of the house, it quickly found its way into that room. And I don't know about you guys, but if my house is a mess, my life is a mess. The first part of this series is gonna be three DIYs, a hanging faux plant, a floating shelf, and a double desk. The second part is gonna be the restyling of the room and transforming it all together. At the end of each DIY, I'm gonna provide you with how much this project cost me compared to retail prices. But I'm also going to link all the materials down below and let's just jump right in here and I hope you guys enjoy. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our E6000 and glue the bottom of our styrofoam. Then we are going to put it in the half circle and then into the basket. From there, we're gonna grab our greenery. You can pick whatever greenery you would like and stab it right on in there. From there, you wanna weave the greenery through our strings, that way we can hang it and then adjust it to your pleasing. You guys, you gotta meet little Whiskey. He's my favorite. So we're going to screw in our hook right into the ceiling and then after you hook your basket, please do not fall like I almost did. And there you have it, it is a hanging faux plant. I did lose some footage so we want to make sure that we sand this piece of wood beforehand to ensure that the stain does set and then we are going to condition this evenly to avoid blotchiness and then let set for 30 minutes. So I'm just using a lint free paper towel to dip directly into the can of stain and wiping onto the piece of wood. Then I'm using a dry paper towel to remove any of the excess so it doesn't dry blotchy. We are using English chestnut which I don't plan on doing a second coat on this and then we're just going to let it sit for about two hours to dry. Okay so it's been two hours and we are going to flip the board over. Just a quick tip when you are staining do not go against the grain. Go with the grain. Go with the flow. Okay? It's time to install the shelf. I marked where the holes go with a Sharpie and with the wall mounts that's provided in this kit, I didn't have a drill bit for. So I just used the Phillips head drill bit to put the holes in and then put the wall mounts in. If you are going to use these brackets, make sure the width of your board is eight and a half inches. You are gonna make mistakes when you do DIYs. If you see here, my middle bracket is just a little bit too high and it created a seesaw. So I just unscrewed it, lowered the bracket just a little bit and drilled the screws in at an angle into the wall mount. Then you're gonna take your U brackets and drill them right into the wood to hold it in place. And there you have it, a floating shelf. So our base for the desk is going to be three Alex drawers and I actually put Jesse to work to help me build them out. I don't have big girl tools yet so I had my lumber cut in half into four four and a half by ten foot and two five and a half by ten foot for a total of about 25 inches to cover my base. Hands down the most time consuming part about this desktop was the sanding. I am starting off with an 80 grit sandpaper and just to make sure that everything is even everything is cleaned off and you want to roughen roughen the wood up just a little bit so the wood will take in the stain itself i am tired <laughs> grit that i'm using is 80 
um, that's just to smooth everything out get all the words and things off of it and then from there I'm gonna use the 150 grit and then the 220 I want it to be as smooth as possible this is gonna be a space that I am going to be using often we are back in business so you see me here changing my sandpaper I'm moving up from 150 to 220 grit to make this surface as smooth as possible So we want to make sure that we get all the dust off from sanding this wood. So just get a Tupperware of water and just wipe it on down. We don't want to have blotchy stain. That is our goal. And flip it over and do the exact same thing. No Chewy, you cannot have my peanut butter and jelly. So we're going to start with our pre-stained conditioner and we're going to evenly distribute it on the wood. Again, we want to make sure we're removing the excess and then letting it sit for about 30 minutes. Look at the kids coming to say hi to YouTube. English chestnut is one of my favorites. I did get it from Home Depot. I actually didn't even end up using all four of the cans for this project. But again, you're going to be taking that paper towel, evenly distributing it, taking that dry paper towel, and wiping off the excess. So I let it dry for about two hours and then applied my second coat. I actually decided on doing a third coat because I had so much stain left over and still didn't finish it, but I wanted it to match the day bed that I have in the room. But that'll be up to you how dark you want it. So we're gonna flip the wood over and do the same exact process. One thing I wish I would've done is preconditioned the wood beforehand, just to make the process a little bit quicker towards the end. So this is when things went south, when I started playing Tetris with these boards. I realized I had warped wood which means the wood is curved and it created a seesaw effect as well as large gaps between my wood so one thing that i should have did differently and learned from my mistakes is to check your wood because i was pretty bummed out poor mirna i feel very defeated but it is okay this is what happens when you try and diy stuff you're gonna mess up but i'm gonna figure this out I'm definitely not going to mess with it anymore today. I'm gonna go to sleep on it. So wood one, Myrna zero, but I will win this battle. Good morning, you guys. It is a new day and last night was pretty disappointing. We are at Home Depot and you know what we're not going to do? We are not gonna let our hard work go to waste today. I have a few ideas on how to fix it. So let's just get on in here and see what we can come up with. I highly recommend numbering your boards because it will save you in the long run. And I did invest in a pocket hole jig and I did pocket holes in alternating directions so I can nail the boards to one another on both sides. How many times have you cried during this process? <laughs> <laughs> The cinder box was Jesse's idea and I absolutely love it. It's to hold the wood down and the clamps is to hold it together and before nailing it, we left it like this for about 24 hours. It's the moment of truth. Dun dun dun. I saw a huge difference and I was so happy about it. So this is the contraption that we created. We clamped on both sides and then to make sure the wood was flush, we actually put a book up underneath to hold the pieces of wood together upwards. So when we nail it together, we're nailing it flush to one another. So this desktop was being very stubborn and to avoid stabbing myself, I asked Jesse to come help a girl out. Lastly, I added three of these brackets underneath the desktop just to make sure everything was held in place. Took off the clamps, and then from there, I just put my base to make sure it was exactly 10 feet apart.
you guys enjoyed part one of the office slash guest room makeover. This desk was not easy, so learn from my mistakes and check your wood. If you end up doing any of these DIYs, be sure to tag me on Instagram because the whole purpose of this channel is for us to create together. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe for your weekly dose of DIYs, thrift flips, and room makeovers. Next week starts our second part to the series where we'll be piecing the room together, styling, and doing a little something something on this wall. Let's get to this giveaway. I'm so excited. If you haven't watched the DIY Vine Wall, be sure to check it out. And if you have, it's time to announce our giveaway winner. I got a random generator, so here we go. I'm so excited, Barbsy Beauty, congratulations. You just won a set of curtain lights. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.